Hey, it's your girl Cherry here and today we're doing 50 frugal living tips. It is going to be a frugal living marathon. So grab your 20 cent iced coffee or 90 cent avocado toast and start watching. Number one is that I do not chase after the newest technology. As a YouTuber, this can be kind of difficult because a lot of YouTubers do chase after the newest camera or the newest phone because it is part of being a YouTuber. It can increase your efficiency to some extent. But I just simply don't see the need of upgrading my phone to like uh, iPhone 11 right now. And I also don't see the need to upgrade my MacBook Air since it is still operating after using it for three years. The camera that I'm using right now is the Canon 80D, which is kind of an old school camera by now. It shoots 1080 instead of 4K, but I think it is enough for me to produce quality YouTube videos. And number two, similarly, similar with chasing after technology trends, I also don't chase after fashion trends or beauty trends. So I always wait for an extended period of time until I actually buy a new product, let it be an eyeliner or face cream. I always stick with the classics and I don't chase after the trend. Number three is that similarly, I also only buy the very classy designs of everything. From clothes to jewelry to shoes, I never go after trends because trends come and go like waves in the ocean. So I really don't see any need for me to buy very trendy items that can make me like the it girl uh, for a week. And then a week later, I have to toss that piece of item and then chase after a new trend. I really don't see the point and honestly, I am just too lazy for that stuff. Number four is that when I really do need to buy something, I always make sure to turn on my Ebates extension in my Google Chrome browser. What Ebates does is that it gives you cash back on many, many websites that you shop in. They also sometimes have four times cash back or very exclusive deals that you can only see after installing this Google Chrome plugin. So I will include an invite link in the info box so you can check that out for yourself. Even though 3%, 5%, 10% may not seem like a lot at the first glance, think about how much money you will save in the long run. And Ebates also allow you to get those cash back even with existing discounts on the website. Let's say Macy's gives you 40% off and Ebates can give you additional cash back on top of those 40% off. You will also get $25 every time you invite a new friend to join Ebates and Ebates will just mail you your check. Number five is Amazon. I'm an Amazon Prime member and I saved so much gas money and also time for just ordering things from Amazon. And for the majority of the times when I do price checks and price comparisons, I always find that the things on Amazon cost the least. This might be because Amazon does not have the same amount of overhead cost. It does not have to pay rent per se. So that is why the prices on Amazon tend to be a lot more affordable. Number six is the 30 day rule. So I always give myself 30 days to decide whether or not I really need to make this one time purchase. Sometimes it might be just an urge because I saw this piece of clothing, like maybe these white pants look super good on this fashion blogger, but do I really need white pants in my life? I will give myself 30 days to think about it. And nine times out of 10, that urge goes away after 30 days. If I don't need that item for 30 days, then why would I purchase this item? Number seven is shop secondhand. I buy a lot of my furniture secondhand. That coffee table outside in the living room that is for sale right now, I got that secondhand. I also got a lot of my past furniture secondhand, even though I sold all of them already. I also get some of my clothes secondhand. And I don't see anything wrong with that because there is really a surplus of supply of secondhand clothes and not enough demand. Just walk into your nearest consignment store or thrift store or secondhand store and you will see, wow, all these clothes but 
Why are they just sitting here? Why are people not purchasing them? And number eight is sell your unused item on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or even Facebook groups. This way you can not only eliminate a lot of junk in your storage and get more space, you can also get some cash out of it. Number nine is unsubscribe from shopping sites. And I know a lot of people might be like, but you're gonna miss out on those exclusive deals and discounts. But think about it. How many times have you clicked onto a shopping site simply because it appeared in your inbox? You did not even plan to shop at that place, but because this discount message showed up in your inbox, you clicked into it and purchased something that you never planned to purchase. This happened to me several times, and I really don't see why I should let this happen again. If I really need to buy something, I will go to the store myself or go to the website myself. And if there is a discount, I will be able to see that discount. I don't need the discount to be sent to my inbox in order to remind me that I need to buy something. And another way to get around this is that you can also register a separate email specifically for shopping. And you only look into that email when you need to shop for something. And you keep your goals super clear so you don't get distracted by discounts from other stores that you did not plan to shop at. And number 10 is that similarly, you should unsubscribe from those fashion bloggers that all they do is tell you to buy, buy, and buy more things. A lot of fashion bloggers do this and they use really misleading titles like every girl needs this, every woman needs this pair of heels, or this season, these are those must buy items. You really don't need these messages in your life. You don't need to buy anything to make you more or less of who you are. You are who you are. What you buy is not going to change who you are. And most of the time, these titles are so clickbaity because these fashion bloggers benefit directly from you purchasing with the links they put in the info box. I also used to do a lot of fashion content, but I really try not to push people to buy things because I simply don't believe in just blindly buying. I believe in buying quality products, products that last you a lifetime or at least a very long time and products that have great value retention. This is something that I mention over and over again on my channel. And number 11 might also go against a lot of other frugal bloggers tips and is that do not buy things in bulk simply because it is cheaper cost per unit. It is not worth it. Sometimes I find myself buying maybe 100 cup noodles, for example. Do I really need 100 cup noodles in my life? Am I really going to finish those 100 cup noodles? Probably not. But then because it is so cheap per unit, I tend to buy things in bulk that I don't actually need or finish. So that is why you should consider beyond the cost per unit and actually think about what, what's the likelihood of you finishing this bulk of things. If it's something like toilet paper that you will finish sooner or later and it has no clear expiration date, then I guess, yeah, you can buy them in bulk from Costco. But if it's something like some food that is cheaper in bulk or some seasoning that is cheaper in bulk, but you know you won't finish it, then why buy them in bulk? And number 12, is by generic brands. Just look into the ingredients. Generic brands are not different from name brands. When you start buying generic brands, you will start to realize that it is cheaper and the content is also the same. A lot of the generic branded things out there actually were made from the same factory that produces the name brand things. They just swap the packaging and make it more expensive for the name brand things, whereas you get the exactly same thing with the generic brands. Number 13 is use towel instead of paper towel. And this is just a more specific way of saying if you can buy something that can be reused over and over again, don't buy the disposable ones because disposable things are always more expensive in the long run, especially if you know you'll be using this thing over and over again. Something as simple as paper towel. Using towel instead of paper towel can save you so much money in the long run. Number 14 is that I use credit cards for cashbacks and I have successfully dodged the payment of several of my credit cards because I simply applied my credit card points for cashback 
and I used it for my credit card balance. Number 15 is that I use my credit cards for budgeting and expense tracking. For my budgeting, I have made several budgeting videos since March of 2019 showing you exactly what my budget looks like, how much I spend every month down to the penny. And it is super fast and easy for me to do this because I simply look at my credit card statements and I can pinpoint exactly where these money went where I spent these money on. And since I use each credit card for different categories, for example, I use the American Express Rose Gold card specifically for dining out, and it's super easy for me to categorize my spending within those credit card categories. Each and every month, it only takes me around 20 minutes to figure out my spending for the entire month. Number 16 is automate your bills. From water to gas to electricity, just automate it. This will save you so much time and you can use that time to produce more value and earn more money. Number 17 is credit card churning, which is the act of signing up for different credit cards in order to get their points. Some credit cards can give you credit card points that are valued at several hundred dollars. And for some other credit cards, they give you direct cash back for your purchases. The most recent credit card that I signed up for and opened is the Bank of America World MasterCard. And it gave me $200 cash back for my first $1,000 purchases in the past three months. And for the $1,000 purchases, I did not buy anything that I did not plan for. I already wanted to get a cat litter robot before I got this card. And getting this card just gave me a $200 discount on my purchase. Number 18 is bank account turning. So similar to credit card turning, bank account turning also gives you cash bonuses when you open up new bank accounts. The advantage to bank account turning is that they do not pull up your credit score. So you do not have to worry about having a ding in your credit score because of opening a new bank account. These are just direct cash backs. And in order to find out more bank account turning opportunities, I have actually made a master list of all the credit card and bank account turning with their cash rewards, with their application links and a Google Sheets. I will leave the link in my info box. And number 19 is no cable. I stopped paying for cable since high school. Actually, I never really paid for cable because I was living with my parents back then. So I never found the need to have cable, especially with YouTube and Amazon Prime movies. I really don't find the need to get cable anymore. I can almost get anything that I want to watch from the internet. And number 20 is cut down on phone cost, your phone bills. Ask around and price compare and even ask your frugal friends what service do they use? Because paying 60 to 100 bucks every single month for a phone bill is pretty absurd. Number 21 is that I don't use subscription services such as Netflix or SoundCloud or Spotify. The only subscription service that I use is Amazon Prime, which for my lifestyle actually saves me more money. So that's why I keep on using it, but I don't have any monthly subscription service. Number 22 is errands day. And errands day for me is a way for me to increase my efficiency by just bulking all my chores together. I have also automated a lot of my chores, such as getting my litter robot and also getting a vacuum robot. This way I can save so much more time and focus my energy and time on the things that really move the needle in terms of saving money and making money. Number 23 is that I don't wash my car. All right, I know you might think I'm like super dirty and everything. I do vacuum the inside of my car, but for the outside of my car, I just don't see the need to wash it. Sometimes when I get my gas refill, I do clean the windows of my car, but I really don't see the need to get a car wash like every single month because it's gonna get dirty. And especially because I do park outside at work and also at home, it's an outdoor parking spot. I don't see the need to keep going back to the car wash and just get my car dirty again when I park at home. Number 24 is get a free library card. And you can get access to a lot of free resources such as audiobooks, free internet, and also, of course, traditional books. Number 25 is just a personal habit. I always make sure I turn off all the electronics, all the lights, all the AC, all the fans before I leave the house. Number 26 is that I don't have an AC installed in my room. I just use a fan. 
and partially it is because I make YouTube videos and having an AC would just be way too loud for my videos. So I don't even turn the AC on for most of the time. So why would I get a portable AC if I film for so much of my life and I don't use the AC when I film? Living in Santa Monica, I can say you can tolerate living without AC. And I do have AC in the living room, just not in my bedroom. I will also link the fan that I use in the info box so you can check that out. I think it's a pretty great fan, it's only 20 bucks. I mean, what more can you ask for? It's 20 bucks. Number 27 is that I don't use my dishwasher. I just hand wash my dishes. And also, I don't use that much dishes anyway, so I don't have that many dishes to wash. We just use the dishwasher like a drying rack, like most Asian households. Number 28, it's that I don't use the coin op dryer and washer. I actually hand wash my clothes. Since a lot of my clothes are made with silk and delicate materials, I just find that it gives me a peace of mind when I hand wash my clothes. I also like to hand wash my undergarments because I find that way it is more sanitary. I will link the detergent that I use for my silk items in my info box. Number 29 is that I always pregame before partying. I really don't find the need to pay 8 to 15 bucks on a single drink when you go out. This can really add up in the long run. I know a lot of people who spend upwards to $200 just in one night. That is a lot of money. And that is also money that can be put into your investments. So that is why I always pregame before I go out. And number 30 is that I find free events on meetup.com. And this is one great way to not be judged because you're being frugal. A lot of the free events will explicitly say that they're free in the title. So you don't even have to be worried about being judged by your friends because you're so frugal and you want to go to a free event. Number 31 is cut back on meaningless social activities. I'm pretty sure you have felt the times when you don't want to go to a party, but you're just going for the sake of going. You're just going for the sake of some of your not so close friends want you to go and you go to a party and then you end up buying a lot of drinks or food and spending a lot of money and it makes you feel really unhappy. As I grow older and wiser, I learn to eliminate these meaningless social activities. If these people are not my true friends, if these are just my social friends, which in Chinese we call 酒肉朋友, if that is the case, then why do I have to attend these meaningless social interactions and activities? They not only drain my energy, but also drain my wallet. Number 32 is resist the temptation of buying a food or a drink just for social reasons. Sometimes at social events, we can feel so awkward and we feel like we have to hold a cup in our hands in order to feel less awkward. Well, see the above tip, to not go to these meaningless social events, but even when you're at there, just resist the temptation of holding a drink in your hand. It's really not necessary. And if you really want to hold something, just get a free glass of water. Number 33 is drive a used car. The current car that I'm driving is used. It's a 2014 car. But if I were to rewind back to the day when I purchased this car, I'd probably get a car that's even older and I'll also do extensive research on where is the bottom of the depreciation curve, AKA what year of what car I should get to get the most bang out of my buck. Number 34 is don't get those bundle deals on a special car component insurance or maintenance because most of the time, these are just ways for the car dealership to make extra money. And most of the time, these bundles are pure junk. I know this from experience, these car dealerships, they have this like listed price, but then they encourage you to get these extra bundles. They make it sound like a great deal and they make it seem like you have to get this to protect your car. Uh, no, you don't because almost, almost every single time, I just hear people talk about this as a complete waste of money and I probably wasted like almost 10K on these bundles that I never used ever throughout the life of me driving. So what is the point? Number 35 is that I cut my own hair and this has saved me so much money for so many years. I even tried cutting my own bangs, which I will include the video link so you can check that out. That was me a couple years ago, so I probably look pretty different but I cut my own hair 
and I only get my hair professionally cut when I get my hair colored professionally, which is not that often. Number 36 is I also dye my own hair. So this is also something that I do on my own with bubble hair dye. Japanese bubble hair dye are seriously so easy. They are in foam form, bubble form, so you just need to put it on your hair, kind of like when you um, wash your hair with shampoo, and the color distributes really, really nicely and evenly. My current hair is not done with bubble hair dye because I did want to get highlights, I did want to get a rose gold color, but I have used bubble hair dyes for several times, and each time I was not disappointed. The good thing about using bubble hair tie is that it is completely possible for you to do it on your own without anyone's help. Number 37 is that I do my own gel nails and I will also show you exactly how I do my gel nails in a future video. Doing your nails on your own not only saves you a lot of money, but of course also time because you no longer have to wait in line. Oftentimes for the popular nail salons, even after I make an appointment, I have to sit there for like half an hour or more just to get the nail technician to work on my nails. The time wasted can easily be used for a more productive projects such as filming YouTube videos. So that is why I decided to do my own nails. So I can control exactly what my nails look like, I can control exactly what time I do my nails, and I can control exactly how many jumps I want to put on my nails to bling them up. Number 38 is that I do my own lash extensions. I will also include a video, a tutorial of me doing my own individual lash extensions. The good thing about this is that this can save you so much money. A lash extension appointment can, the lowest one I found is $100 and a refill is like $60 but you still need to pay tip. And by doing lash extensions on your own, you probably only need to spend like 20 bucks, 20 bucks for a full kit that you can use for several months. For nail appointments, nail appointments usually range from 25 bucks to 200 bucks. And you can easily spend that 25 bucks on a nail art kit. And you can use this kit for so many times. I want to say at least 30 times with just those 25 bucks initial investment. And number 39 is that I wash my own clothes, especially the silk ones and the delicate material clothes so that I can make my clothes last much longer. And number 40 is that I do a monthly purge of a very specific area of my apartment every single month. It can be really overwhelming doing a purge of everywhere in my apartment, but I like to do a purge of a very specific cabinet, for example, at my apartment so I can know exactly what is in there, what I can sell, and what I can stop buying. Because sometimes we buy something, we forget they exist, and we keep buying the same item over and over again because we keep forgetting that we have purchased them in the past. By doing a purge, you not only find those duplicate items, you can also find which are some items that you never reach for, you never use, so that you can sell those items. Number 41 is that I travel with miles. I stopped paying out of pocket for plane tickets simply because it is just so much more cost effective to purchase your tickets with miles. The miles I use are from Life Miles, which is part of the Star Alliance. They work with a lot of airlines under Star Alliance, and my most recent solo trip to Panama was also purchased with miles. My round trip ticket, including a business class ticket from Panama to LA, LA to Panama round trip was only 600 something dollars. Number 42 is book Airbnb instead of hotel because it is not only cheaper, but it also gives you a very authentic experience of the local life. Number 43 is that I walk instead of Uber for a lot of touristy things that I do when I travel. Number 44 is that I buy my flights early. I always purchase my tickets at least a month or two before my actual travel day so I can get the best deals in the market. Number 45 is that I pack energy bars with me whenever I do touristy things in a foreign place. Because oftentimes the touristy places sell really expensive and overpriced food. And I also don't want to stop for an extensive amount of time just for eating, just for filling my stomach. 
I'd rather spend that time exploring the new country, exploring the new city. So I always pack energy bars with me whenever I do a lot of walking in touristy places so I can fill up my stomach in no time with minimum cost. Number 46 is that I have a reusable water bottle whenever I travel and whenever I do sports. And this can save me so much money in the long run. Because if you buy plastic water bottles individually, they can cost anywhere from a buck to five bucks, depending on which brand you get. And by packing your own water bottle, that cost is zero because I can just drink filtered tap water. Number 47 is that I also use a mug at work so I can eliminate producing waste and also take advantage of my office's free coffee. Number 48 is that I practice zero food waste, especially when I dine out. I always ask for the leftovers for to go. Even though some people might look at this as a really cheap thing to do, it actually saved me so much money. Sometimes my one meal can be split into three different meals just because I packed to go boxes. And if you're worried about your environmental footprint, you can also bring your own boxes and just pack the leftovers into your own boxes. Number 49 is that I never buy coffee or tea. Never ever. The only time I buy a drink is probably boba, which I do not make on my own. But of course it is possible to make boba on your own. It just takes a long time. But I never buy coffee, tea, or pretty much anything that I can make on my own. I always make my own coffee and tea. I will also link some of the equipments that I use in my info box. And number 50, which is very crucial, is that I don't order drinks at meals because drinks at meals can be so expensive, especially if they're alcoholic drinks. A glass of wine can cost 12 to 15 bucks, depending on what wine it is. And honestly, I cannot tell the difference between the wine they serve at restaurants and the wine I can get from TJ's. What is the point spending so much money for a glass of wine when you dine out? That's a lot of costs added together cumulatively. So these are my 50 frugal living tips. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I will see you in my next personal finance video. If you enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and hit that bell for more videos like this. We all say things like, I need to save more money, or I'm going to go to the gym this summer and become like The Rock. But quite often we say these things without actually actioning them. So if you actually want to save money, then you're in the right place. Because today I'm going to teach you six money saving tips which you can use to reduce your spending. Hello and welcome to Max Talks, where every Sunday I make videos to help you get to where you want to be. Tip number one is to use charity shops. For me, this is a no brainer because so many people go and buy something new which costs a load of money when in reality you could probably get it for so much cheaper at a charity shop and it's a win-win because not only are you getting it cheaper, you're also contributing to the good work of a local charity. So, I mean, go down to your high, local high street, see what charity shops are available and to be honest, you'd probably find some like designer stuff there. So if you're really into clothes or like you want some, some toys and you don't want to break the bank, definitely look into charity shops. And also that goes with car boot sales as well. So I don't know if they have them, I'm sure they have them in, in kind of other parts of the world as well. But in the UK, people sell junk that they've got lying around in their house from their car. And quite often you can get bargains. You can get old CDs, DVDs, books for like 50p, really, really cheap. So that can be a great place to look if you're looking for a bargain. Number two is to use own brand. So by own brand, I mean like supermarket own brand. So with a lot of these products and stuff, the branded products will be made in the same factory as the own brand. So as an example, if you were to get Heinz tomato ketchup, quite often the own supermarket that you're in will have their own version, which is a lot cheaper and tastes very, very similar there's a lot of tests you can see on YouTube where people kind of test the own brand versus the branded and quite often they can't even tell the difference. So test out, you might find that there's some which you stick to your branded ones because you prefer those, but that could be a really good way of saving money because even if you kind of save one or two pounds on that, if it's a repeat purchase, that's gonna add up into your savings over a long period of time. Number three, is bartering. You might think of bartering as something which only happens on a, on a market store where you're haggling down for the price. But in reality, bartering is such a great tool to practice because it can save you money. 
This is particularly essential if you're making a massive purchase. So say if you're getting like a big TV or a car, quite often you can kind of negotiate the price down from what it was. Ultimately, at the end of the day, think of it from a salesman's perspective. The business or the salesperson wants to make the sale. They want to get the commission from that sale. And you can use this to your advantage by trying to negotiate the price down. Quite often, the salespeople will have a minimum price that they're willing to sell it for. Don't just think because it's listed as a certain price that that's the price that you have to pay. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that this works in every context because if you go to the supermarket, you can't just go, I'm only going to pay 50p for that one pound product because in supermarkets, it doesn't really work. It works better if you're making a big purchase like a car dealership or something along those lines where you've got a big item and you could probably get a bit of a reduction. Now, if you wanna see a separate video on kind of negotiation, then by all means, I'm happy to do that. Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're there, why not leave a like rating? Turn that little thumbs up button blue for me. Did you do it? Thank you very much. Let's move on to number four then, which is wholesale. So a lot of different wholesalers will offer big quantities of products and things that you would buy every day for a discount but quite often these are only available to people with memberships. This doesn't mean that I'm saying to take advantage of all your friends and family that have like Costco memberships or anything like that. But what I am saying is that you can use those wherever possible. It doesn't mean that you have to kind of only go to your friends who have Costco memberships and say, oh, can you take me to Costco? I really need to get use your memberships. Because clearly that's not a great way to keep communication with your families. But wherever it is possible, you may as well use it, especially for the big like bulk purchases like toilet roll or deodorant or toiletries and things like that. If you have that available to you, definitely take advantage. Number five is timing the supermarket. So again, I'm not sure how wide this goes, but definitely in the UK, in most supermarkets, they'll have like a reduced section where there'll be lots of food which is short on date and is gonna expire soon and so the price is dramatically reduced. Now, quite often, they will have a very specific time period in which this food is reduced. If you can figure out which time this happens at, you can go to the supermarket, to the reduced aisle at that particular time and see if there's anything that you want. Now, quite often, you can get some absolute bargain reductions. I've seen people get things for like five or six pence, which are worth a few pounds, and especially if you can kind of freeze it afterwards as well, that is an excellent way and, and if you take advantage of that on a regular basis that can be a great way to dramatically reduce the cost of your supermarket shop it obviously takes a bit of time to get to know the individual supermarket since it will be different store by store but if you go back over a period of time you should be able to kind of notice some patterns and work out when that actually happens and then you can go in there for that time and then the final tip tip number six is freebies coupons and reward schemes so i did a video not too long ago about money saving tips which i covered reward schemes in so you can check that out up there for more information about that but you may or may not have seen the TV show Extreme Couponing. And I'm not gonna lie, every time I watch this show, it's absolutely mind blowing because these guys spend their life looking for coupons and to get some savings and reductions. And I've seen people stockpile huge amounts of random products. Like they have cat food and dog food and they don't even have cats and dogs, but they, they do it because they've got coupons for it. I've seen one or two where they actually got the supermarket to pay them money for like a $300 shop. Now these are mostly in America and maybe these have been phased out now because people have taken it to such an extreme. But even in the UK or wherever you are, see if you can find some coupons, especially with the things that you kind of buy on a regular basis. There's, you could probably look in magazines, newspapers, even coupon websites. See if there's things, some things that you can find which will allow you to cut a bit of money off your spend. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you've enjoyed. Just a quick couple of points before I go. If you're into online shopping, then another YouTuber called I'm Davis has made a really good video on some money saving tips for online shopping. So I'll leave that in the annotation up there so you can check that out. I hope that this video has been useful. If you found it useful, please leave a like rating. Leave a comment below with, I'm basically Bill Gates, if you made it this far. And also, if you want some more kind of money saving tips and you, and you haven't got enough of me yet, I've done a couple of podcasts on the Andrew Lopez fin Finance Podcast channel, so you can check out that again in the annotation up there. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next Sunday. If you're on it.
imagine forgetting to ask you to subscribe in your own outro. Anyway, if you did enjoy, please subscribe for new content every single Sunday. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you get a notification every time I upload, and I'll see you next Sunday.